All right, are we all here? James, I see you. I think you're muted. <laughs> uh, unmute. There we go. It says the host is in, I got a prompt that says the host is inviting you to join breakout room later, Don't right? Do that. The answer's no, we're here. We're live. We'll be back. <laughs> we're live. Out of that. <laughs> I think Steven, um, don't know, he was here and then he left and I'm sure he'll come back. All right, well, we'll uh, I'll give him a minute here. Good uh, evening, everyone. Hello, everyone. Hello, world. <laughs> well, I'll start us off while we wait for Steven to join us here. Welcome to the first ever Series Fest watch party. I am Randy Kleiner, the founder and CEO of Series Fest and your host for this evening. Um, Series Fest is a nonprofit organization that champions and celebrates episodic storytelling. And today I'm joined by two, well, hopefully a second one coming right back in, um, <laughs> uh, incredibly talented and creative stars of the hit series, one of my favorites, One Tree Hill, James Lafferty and Stephen Coletti. All right. Um, yeah, Stephen will be here in a second, I'm sure. No text from him yet. Yep, there he is. There he is. <laughs> Back. Where was I? I mean, you just got introduced. <laughs> where you were in the cloud somewhere. Well, we're happy to have Clouded. you. <laughs> oh. I just went to Hogwarts and back, by the way. Well, we are coming to you live from our own homes. And here how here's how this is gonna work. You can write your questions into the chat function onto YouTube, and we will answer as many as we can in 30 minutes. Um, but while you're writing your first question, I'm going to kick it over to James and Stephen to talk about their experience with Series Fest. Yeah, so we, um, we first got in touch with Series Fest, um, was that 2018, Randy? It was, right? What year? Yeah, 2018. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so Stephen and I penned it um, pilot called uh, Everyone is Doing Great, and it got into Series Fest, thanks to the lovely, lovely team over there. And um, we just had an amazing time um, at that, that, that first year, sort of getting to know other, you know, independent content creators and seeing um, what kind of a platform they'd really built for people who were in our position, who were trying to do um, something in television independently that was really, really difficult to do. And it, it's hard to take a next step when you create a TV pilot because there's not a lot of options and avenues for you to showcase what you've actually done and Series Fest is like one of the very few organizations that that does that um, and they're really really good about reaching far and wide to find voices um, you know voices from all different corners of you know life and earth and um, we just thought it was an, an incredible collection of people and you know you add to that, that they're uh, a nonprofit organization that is um, they're, they're in there doing it for the love of the game uh, you know, we just, we, we fell in love with the whole, the whole weekend, the whole festival and, and everybody there. And so, um, yeah, it's a nice reminder for us too, that, you know, this whole experience is, is being done, um, for free from, from Sirius Fest because that's how they roll. Um, they just, you know, they, they want to help people get their voices out there and they want to engage with people who love television. Um, so, you know, obviously, um, you're here, it's free. If you can donate, um, certainly consider it. Um, I think that, I think there, there is a suggested donation of like $10. Is that what it is, Randy? That's it. Um, that's anything, anything counts. Everything counts. Yep. And, uh, and we highly encourage that. Thank yeah. You. One thing I, I would just add on top of that is that, you know, series fest is a great resource for independent, uh, filmmakers, um, James is talking about to to meet good resources as well. I mean, we we were in the throes of our campaign when we went to Series Fest, and um, because of their nonprofit and, and what they do and, and bringing people together there in Denver, uh, we were able to connect to some people that helped us uh, significantly in our campaign. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, we're just big fans of them and and uh, want to see them keep trucking. So, yeah. Thank you, thank you, guys. Well. Um... We're here to talk about One Tree Hill. So we're gonna to go to our first mm -hmm. question from the fans. This one actually came earlier from Facebook from Isabel Almeida. And she wants to know what's uh, one of your greatest memories from the set of One Tree Hill? And Stephen, why don't we start with you? Um, man, um, I, one of my greatest memories from set. Um, 
I like pulling a lot of pranks on on uh, people, and I, I think you could talk uh, probably Robert Buckley um, is the genesis of, of a lot of them. Um, that that little mind over there, he, he would create all sorts of uh, fun ideas for us to embark on and and, and try to mess with some people. Um, and and it was like I think it was when Twitter was starting to kind of pick up steam, and Rob was getting into the hashtag game. And so he was throwing out, like, he'd get to get, like, a, some sort of theme, and we'd run with it for a little while. And then we started, uh, I think we came up with this one where we were, <laughs> poor James just had no idea what was coming, where we would, we would prank people, and then we would just do some, some sort of hashtag blame James Lafferty. Um, <laughs> and, and so from there, it became this thing where, like, how many times can we just go out and do terrible things and then just hashtag blame James Lafferty, which is terrible. But uh, I mean, those are the moments, you know, a lot of stuff off camera with the laughs with, uh, with the crew and, and, and with the cast um, that I cherish. And, uh, you know, we, you know, we're out there, we're, we're, we're playing, you know, for we're make, make believe for a living. And so, um, you know, to not take ourselves too seriously and have fun and, and, and joke around. Um, because as you could see in some of these episodes, as you just saw, there's some tense stuff that happens. Uh, so to have that air on screen uh, in between action uh, and then do have our fun and, and be knuckleheads in their 20s um, uh, off camera. And, and those are the memories that, that I always cherish. So God, we, got, we got a lot of those. It's a treasure trove. But that was just one that came up to the top of my head. <laughs> About you. And here's the tequila I drink to drown those memories. <laughs> um, yeah, I think um, sort of going off of what Stephen said about um, you know spending the time with the people there and and how long we were there. I think my greatest memories are those are those memories where you know you're working with people who you've been working with for you know, a, a half a decade or a decade. And it's really, really late at night and you're, you know, you're in your 15th hour and then you're at the river court and, you know, all of downtown Wilmington is like right across the river and it's all lit up because it's been rigged by our crew. And, um, you know, everyone's tired and a little bit, a little bit like punchy and, um, and then, you know, people start to get the giggles because they're so tired, but, everyone's just everyone's having a really good time and everyone's really comfortable with each other and um those are the moments when i think you feel like you know it, it feels like it could last forever because it's lasted for so long but you also at the same time you know very well that it's not going to last forever so i just i remember you know at some of those locations like the river court like karen's cafe you have these little moments where you're just kind of like um yeah, this is this is amazing, and uh, and, and I hope it I, I hope it lasts for a little bit longer. But if not, I'm gonna enjoy it while it lasts. I love that you just mentioned the river court. Just gave a little warmth to my heart because we didn't actually get to see the river court in this episode, but um, so many yeah. other popular places like Karen's Cafe and things like that, and uh, just such great memories. That was um, that was some of the I was gonna say some of the best shots. I think the show when when they were shooting at the river court. They would go across the river uh, to downtown um, Wilmington and, and light up the, the whole kind of main street there to be in the background. And when you had the production kind of that big on that scale where the whole kind of it feels like the whole city's involved for that night uh, was always pretty cool yeah. and very exciting. And, and that's what I think what James talking about. You kind of take those moments when you're standing on that river quarter over there and looking across the river and be like, man, what, what a great time to, uh, to be able to experience this and, and be with these people. I love that. Um, here's one from Sarah Martin. What are your what What are your favorite Chase and Nathan moments, or or one of your favorite scenes that you guys did together? <laughs> well, I would. This is actually. Um, I'll take that a step further because we didn't. I mean, we didn't have too many scenes together. Uh, I think that. Um, yeah, Nathan didn't need quite the help of of Chase coming in the bar too often, looking for some sound advice. Um, uh, <laughs> testament to Nathan there. Um, but I, I think. You know this episode that you guys just watched. James is is directing, and that was uh that was the first time I I, I think he directed me. I, I know he directed some episodes before that, three or four, but I was not in any of them. So um, that was cool, and it was at, at that time. You know, James and I had been friends now for a little bit, and to it was the first time. You know, anybody that I was kind of close to or a friend of mine, they'd be able to direct, and, and to kind of see him go through that and see how he's grown as a director through the seasons um, was pretty cool. And I, and I still remember some of the things that he was telling me. Um, you know, on the day. And I, I remember like, even specifically, there was, there was a note that he gave me when we were standing outside uh, with Chris Keller. Um, he kicks me and, and there was kind of a reaction to it. And, and, you know, he came over and gave me this idea. He actually talked about like one of our favorite films. He's like, remember that one scene 
in Fight Club or this happens. And and I was like, oh, that's brilliant. And he, and he kind of was just like, he was kind of, he used that as like some inspiration. Um, and then I did, and then it wind up, that would wind up being the take that we wind up using in the show. So I think uh, for me, when, when James is directing, that was definitely a, definitely a cool experience. All right, James, one from you that came from Shelby Kim here. Uh, well, for both of you, but you know, if Chase and Nathan were stuck together in quarantine right now, what would you guys be doing? Um, <laughs> I would like we'd say be that, editing a TV show called yeah, yeah. <laughs> We would be grinding on the computer trying to button up uh, this this series <laughs> that they yeah. they happen to embark on. <laughs> yeah, which is exactly what we have been doing. Um, but as far as the characters, they'd probably be on stage um, rapping some karaoke. <laughs> oh yeah, they'd be putting out a mixtape. Yeah, yeah they'd be that's getting exactly some playlists they'd be together. They'd probably be throwing down some beats. Probably writing some songs getting yeah. some dance they're probably on tiktok trying to get the dance moves on lock so that's next the one for hill reunion it's just chase and nathan <laughs> tiktoking <laughs> um one from shannon porter um why uh james and steven did you guys choose this episode um which was 906 to watch for the watch party um well we we kind of felt like the last season was um a cool season to to dip into um you know, selfishly, I'll admit, um, my ego came into play. I thought it was cool that I directed the episode. Uh, no, but I think it was just, um, it, it, was a, it was a matter of like, you know, like what Steven said, it was our first chance to get to uh, work together as, um, as, you know, actor and director, which was a really cool experience for us. And it's one that we, we still remember very, very fondly. Um, I also personally love the stuff that, um, that uh, that Chase and Chris Keller are going through in that episode. It's a it's a wonderful storyline, and it was my favorite thing to shoot throughout because it was a um, it was like Stephen said it was like a, it was a very heavy episode and a very heavy season, um, and there was like some real you know opportunity for humor there. And also, I feel like it was a great payoff for the relationship between those guys that was being established throughout the season. So um, you know, and also I think it was just one of the newer episodes. You know, you go back too far into the um, the one tree hill history and uh, you start to really feel the age of the show <laughs> we didn't want to go back to se season three when uh, you know it's just it's amazing how much technology has improved the look of um of the uh, it can improve the look of a show when it lasts for long enough and i think um it was it was nice to be able to like sit there and watch a show that looks like it more or less like it could be on the air today yeah so, like, <laughs> the characters are so like when i saw chris keller i had come on the screen and I like I haven't watched the show in, in you know a while but because I grew up on it and I saw him and I just had an immediate reaction like look I just got like super angry again um yeah it could be always um you know the best way possible like uh, you know the characters in the show are so strong and so memorable and um it was yeah. just fun to rewatch. Which is it's yeah. so funny that people have that strong reaction to Chris Keller because like <laughs> I mean we we don't we don't have that reaction to it, to that character because we we know Tyler and we've you know known him since the day he walked on the set. He was the most charming and kind <laughs> and talented person. And so it's really funny to see the difference between people's reactions, you know, to Tyler Hilton and Chris <laughs> Keller because they're so it's a testament to his performance because they're so polar opposite. Um, well, Luam Alam would like to know: Do you prefer directing over acting or? Maybe I'm going to take that a step further and also ask you, were there challenges in doing both at the same time? Um, yeah, yeah. I, I think like right now, directing has been um, something that I am really excited about pursuing um, because I haven't gotten to do as much of it as I have acting. Um, acting is, you know, always going to be a passion of mine. But right now, directing, it still feels like um, this exciting new frontier. So that's what really gets my... my um, uh, my gears turning for sure. And as far as being an actor and, and directing the search at the same time, Stephen can speak to this too because he directed an episode of um, our show. Everyone's doing great. Um, it's very challenging. Um, I, I don't. I don't prefer to do that. <laughs> um, it's very nice to be able to be in one headspace or the other because the acting headspace is. It's really, really insular. You're sort of in your own head. You're the only people you're trying to communicate with are the people that are in the scene with you. Um, you're, you're just, you're focused on staying in character. And that is not the mindset that you can be in when you're directing, because when you're directing, you need to have an awareness of everything that's going on around you. So for me, it's always been really tough 
juggling those things and it's not it's not preferable to, to be honest but Steve, how, what, how did you how did you find that i'm still re i'm still recovering man <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was i mean i knew it was going to be a challenge um and the scary thing for me i think coming out of it was that we were i, I knew the reason i felt comfortable um kind of making the leap and, and, and trying to direct and, and everyone is doing great is that we obviously were, you know, know the project so well, so close to it. And um, I felt like if on the fly things needed to change, um, which is, you know, a key component of a director, like, I mean, you're, you're pulling the strings on everything. And when things start to go sideways, as they, they do on every episode of any TV show you're on, you know, you're pulling them and you're keeping things in line as best as possible. Um, so I felt like I, I could do that, but I was humbled. Um, it was difficult. It was seriously difficult. And thankfully, you know, I was surrounded by, um, you know, good people with, with, you know, with James and, and the Nelms brothers and, and with Johnny Durango, um, and who, you know, is, is the DP on, on everyone's doing great. They, they really helped me out. And, and, um, yeah, it's just, and then also what James is saying, when you, when you got to jump on, on camera, um, you know, it's hard turning a switch when, when you're, something is maybe seriously going wrong off camera and you try to get to the bottom of that and then turn the switch. Um, it just, yeah, it's, it's something obviously takes a lot of time uh, and, and practice. So um, yeah, it was, it was a humbling experience, but very rewarding too. Definitely getting to the end of it and, and seeing the episode we're, we're thankful that it all came together. But, um, but yeah, I, I would recommend for anybody who wants to get into directing, you know, do it with your friends as much as possible, you know, try to, direct, 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 do shorts, do shorts, do shorts, just do it as much as possible. So you can get those reps almost like a sport, you know, um, and, and kind of understand what, what that feeling, especially if you want to direct and act at the same time, because you're, you're going to need that. I love that. That's what we always say. If you've got a vision, go, go create it. For, first and foremost, go out there and create it. Um, well, we're, yeah. we're a little over midway. I think we told you we're coming from our own homes. I'm in Denver. The guys are in LA. We'd like to know where you guys are all coming from. So if you could type into the chat where you're located, we'd love to know where you are. Um, and on it's been our... fun seeing uh, the inside of everyone's homes, just kind of like whether it's like <laughs> a newscaster or sportscaster or just journalists that you follow. You're really getting a whole new interest in it. It's yeah, like Steven, it. I actually I had no idea that you had a window, a view of Amsterdam from your living room. <laughs> it's amazing. I didn't know that you, at home, James, your headband game is just a constant. And this is my my fourth live with James. Some of them, and and this is his third different headband that I've seen. I, and I'm actually offering tennis tennis lessons. <laughs> if anybody out there needs them. Everyone has their thing at home, you know. <laughs> That's a good sport for quarantine because you can be six feet away. And so we can, you know, make sure that you're, uh, it's a very healthy uh, thing. To exactly. Find. I was just folding socks right before this live. Wow. Nice. <laughs> you need to wrap right, those around your head, man. <laughs> <laughs> My next question here from William Clark. Are there any props you took from the set and still have from the show of One Tree Hill? I've got one right there, actually. Show us. What is it? Uh, Please be a, a teens for clean. What was it? The teen clean teens. Clean teen teens. <laughs> yeah, I've got a couple of clean teen shirts, but they kind of they're, they're stored away. Um, you know, they, they say virgin for life on the back and then they say clean teen. So as a, you know, 30, 34 year old man now, uh, <laughs> if I you know, break those out or put them up on the wall and somebody comes over who may not necessarily <laughs> understand the show or anything like that, I'm like, it's a little, little controversial or a little, it gives people a little sideways. So those are stored away. Uh, I wish I had, um, you know, we were just out in, in Wilmington for um, an FWB charity event uh, that was put on and it was great. And, and we, um, they had the whole setup and trick and I, I'm kicking myself for not having a trick sign. Um, I, w I wish I got my hands on one of those, but the last season um, Chase had an apartment finally, which was nice. We could see where he lived. Uh, coincidentally, we, we actually, they built it right inside where we shot trick. So while, everyone thought that you know trick prop chase just like pretty much lived inside of trick um <laughs> when we were shooting the show it's pretty much the reality and uh they decorated it with some cool pieces and i remember uh one of our last days of shooting um i need, i just didn't even think about getting anything and i had left and said my goodbyes to the set if you will and then uh i kind of was getting in a car and it hit me i was like i never never grabbed anything so i ran back up 
and just like if you can imagine somebody like in a panic running into a room looking around you're like okay what should i take and i had my yeah my it's called on stealing some things but <laughs> I, this is a long setup for something that is not quite as interesting because this is something that is is in the background somewhere but i just thought this bowling pin was cool so i wanted to take it so i took it and that's what i have there's, I think there's a few other things sitting around. You need to stores, attach a but... you need to attach a metaphor to it or something so that it has you know <laughs> emotional weight. If you had questions for Chase, you'd line him up and knock him down. Offer <laughs> that advice. Chase was the bowling ball. Chase, yeah, you got any? In uh, in season seven, I want to say it was. Um, oh man, I'll get crucified if I get that wrong, but I'm pretty sure it was season seven. Uh, Nathan got a, uh, you know, he, he had gone to the NBA and he got his first shoe contract. And um, so he was going to have a signature shoe. And that's actually, I think, what they were celebrating the night that he went out and then got thrown through a plate glass window and ended up being paralyzed. Um, so I think, or temporarily paralyzed. So I think, you know, for me as a basketball fan and just uh, sort of a sneakerhead growing up, the fact that the character that I was playing had his own shoe was really, disproportionately exciting for me <laughs> it, it was just really very very cool um and so I, I think they made a few pairs and i asked to take um to take i asked steven to take a pair of them home and they uh they let me take them home so i still have those somewhere that's cool that's, i remember those shoes then that was quite the episode um i think it was it was either the season premiere finale of one of them and then it went into that whole other Section. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whole, yeah I remember whole. those shoes. Those were those were pretty cool. Um, oh, this one comes from Megan Miller. This is kind of fun. After seeing every character's arc over nine seasons, if you could have played somebody else, whether a guy or girl, who would it be? Oh, okay. Wait, of, of anybody over the nine seasons of the show? Anyone over the nine seasons. If you could play another character's arc, who would it be? Oh, that's so difficult. There are so many. <laughs> who was, what was, um, uh, the what was Matt Barr's character's name? The crazy stalker. Derek. What was that? Derek. Derek. That was a good one. He was so good in that role. Yeah, Matt Barr was fantastic <laughs> so, in that. So scary. Yeah. So, I thought that. I thought. Um, I think just because of the last season, the the contrast you had with with Chase and and, and Chris Keller, I think Chris Keller would be a fun one. Um, I think Whitey Durham. Um, the coach of the Ravens in those first seasons. Old would probably, man River, would over there. There you go. I feel By like way, I'm. Go ahead. Sorry. I was going to say I feel I feel like I'm just waiting impatiently to be able to play that role. <laughs> well, it's funny. Somebody asked. Uh, Sophia Slutsky asked if you would be both down for a reboot for One Tree Hill, which I think would be great, and you could be Whitey Dura. You know, you could be the head of the Tree Hill Ravens. Exactly. Listen, That's it would only take a couple more years, and I I think I would be of age actually. <laughs> so I've been seeing Whitey on, uh, I've been watching Better Call Saul, and he's had a good couple episodes uh, that, that I've seriously enjoyed seeing him on. It's great That's to see him. He looks great, too, and he's just, like, killed it in the scenes. It's fantastic. Yeah. Barry Corbin, he's a legend. He's a legend. Um, Mary Kate D, uh, would like to know, James, what was your reaction when you found out you were going to be kidnapped, or Nathan was going to be kidnapped in season nine? Did you have any idea that was coming? Uh, no, no, I had no idea that was coming. Um, yeah, I mean, look, I think at, at that point in the show, there wasn't, um, a ton that surprised us. <laughs> <laughs> and I say that, I say that lovingly because it was, it was fun. You know, we, we knew that there was, that in the world of One Tree Hill, like anything was possible and, um, and, and wild things happened and it was almost, you know, you were almost hoping that it would happen to your character because, we all had such a good time playing those arcs that went a little bit outside of the norm or, or about, uh, you know, a bit outside of what the audience was expecting. And, um, and so I was, yeah, I was, I was excited to play that because it was just, um, you know, I, as far as like being tied to a chair for a few episodes, you know, <laughs> that wasn't totally ideal, but, um, but it's great, you know, it's, it's great conflict. And it was, it was cool also to sort of, you know, they told me that I, Nathan was going to be kidnapped, but they didn't necessarily tell me how he was going to get out of it or if he was going to get out of it. So it was nice to be able to read scripts and have that ultimate sort of like, 
oh, how does he get out of this one? You know, or is he going to survive this one? I hadn't I had that too many times in the show. So it was cool to have, it was cool to experience that. Nice. Uh, Steven, one from you from Chloe Barford. What was your favorite time playing Chase? More when he was in high school or when he was a grown up? Uh, I, I think the the later years for me, I, I, we saw a little bit more, um, we kind of got into more of like who Chase was and what, we, what he was about, I, I think. Um, and obviously the storyline with, with Chuck was um, definitely something that stuck out for me. So that was, that was really important to me. I, I felt like um, when, when we got to that point, um, it, it was really cool to have stuff uh, like that and to kind of sink your teeth into, if you will. Um, so um, yeah, it's, it's, it's funny. I mean, it, there, it's all been such a long time ago now, um, but it's, it's hard to remember shooting stuff that was before. And, and I obviously, I did a lot more once we made the four year leap. Uh, so I, I think that's why I can trend in, in that direction a little bit more. Um, but I still will never forget the first time that, that I came on and, and after being somebody who was a fan of the show and, and watching it and, um, and then all of a sudden, you know, standing on, on set, which was, in the middle of the campus, um, walking up and saying, hi, I'm Chase. It was basically his first introduction was the first scene. Um, I'll never forget that, that moment. Um, and, and that was exciting. And then the stuff going on the date with Brooke and stuff like that. Um, so um, I, I will still kind of lean on, on the, the stuff after four years for sure. Totally. Well, Kelly Nugent would like to know, um, and since you just mentioned, I mean, it's been a long time. How much of the cast are you guys still in contact with? A lot. I mean, I think um, over the years, the, the the fan conventions and like Stephen was saying, this um, uh, charity convention called uh, FWB stands for Friends with Benefits. Um, you know, there's not everybody can make every single one, but there's one or two a year and you end up seeing people that you haven't seen for a while or you end up seeing people that you, you know, um, it would be difficult to see regularly. Um, because a lot of the cast, you know, they've, they've spread out all over the country now. Um, some people, you know, live all over the East Coast. Some people live all over the West Coast and in between. And um, and it's it. I really don't think it would be possible otherwise for people to get, you know, to see each other and to stay in contact as much as they have if it wasn't for those conventions. So, you know, it, it's been really cool. It's been really cool because not only are those things a, a, a great way to, you know, get some face to face with people who really love the show and who have been there for you for years, but you just get to stay in touch um, in a way that you just wouldn't have otherwise. I feel like it's, it's so easy to move on from a project and just go continue on with everyone's own lives. And um, to have something that continues to bring people together is pretty cool. Yeah. And it's fun to see, um, you know, everyone's different perspectives during the times we, we were shooting and, and, and different stories, you know, you'd, you'd be surprised at what comes up and, and, maybe a story you might hear about yourself you're like wait what what, what happened there? It's like who was who was uh, saying what or you kind of get back to the bottom like hey <laughs> someone might probably be at one of these events you're like hey, james wait what what happened this day um but yeah there's there's been a, i think a, a proximity thanks to those that has offered something unique for us to you know go over stories and 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 st share some of those memories uh which is which is nice yeah very nice. Well, um, before we get to our final questions here, just a reminder, Series Fest is a nonprofit. Um, it's a difficult time for many nonprofits and arts organizations. And so while this event is free, we would like to continue to do more programs for you. Um, so if you are able and capable to donate, there's a donate button right below. Um, any amount helps and there is no amount too big. So, um, you know, please donate and help support Series Fest so we can continue to bring more hangouts and, and watch parties to you. Um, but before we go, um, you guys have been working on an independent project. We got to see the pilot episode and we actually screened the second episode, also both at Series Fest. Um, and I would love to know um, where everyone is doing great at that and what's, uh, what's the next steps. Mm -hmm. Steven, take it away. All right. <laughs> so, um, you know, like, like a lot of things, I think, um, you know, what's happened in, in the last few weeks has, has made us kind of reevaluate exactly wh where we're going um, with this thing. Thankfully, we've, we've, we've been, we've still had some work um, that we need to do on the show uh, as far as um, getting some, some new music put in the show. We worked with Michael Grubbs, played Grubbs um, on One Tree Hill to do a whole score um, through the series, which, which took us up to just basically about a month ago, we were still working it out. Um, but 
you know, we, we had some plans uh, with the show as far as how we wanted to release it. Um, and, you know, over the last month, uh, things have changed, obviously. Um, and so um, there's been a bit of pause on it, um, but it's, it's still um, in the process and, and, and being worked on and, and being polished and, and will find its way to the airwaves um, for you guys. And we can't wait to get it out there. It's just we, we, a big part of it is obviously getting it out there in the right fashion, in the right place, uh, the best place for the show. And, and people are excited to have it. Um, and, you know, um, it's just, yeah, the last few weeks, it's, it's been absolutely insane. And, and to know where the next few weeks and, 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 and months, what, what they hold, um, it, it's just, you know, it's an adjustment period, I think, for everyone, for all of us. And, and uh, that, you know, doesn't disclude our show. So we're, we're trying to figure out um, exactly how we're going to proceed with it and, and w when and where it's going to land and at the right time. Um, so, um, yeah, we're, we're, Thankful to report that the majority of it is, I mean, we're, we are 99% done. Um, uh, we know what it looks like. We're very excited about it. Seriously, it is uh, awesome and fun. So many great performances. And, and um, we have eight episodes uh, mm -hmm. that we will deliver when we get to that point of being able to get it out to you guys. But um, it's been a long time coming. I was telling James, I think we should, we should probably change the name to uh, Odyssey by Homer. But... Um, <laughs> I think it's still going to be everyone is doing great um, for now. And uh, we just, you know, I know people are anxious about it and, and we appreciate the patience for people that have, you know, been involved with the campaign and, and, and have been, you know, honestly wondering where the hell this show is for the last two years. I, we're with you. And it does uh, exist. It is, it is finished and we're just waiting to figure out. Yeah. What to when to release this this bad boy? Um, you yeah. can follow them on social media to keep uh, to keep updated because they're they're pretty good about telling uh, keeping keeping it up to date as possible. And um, everyone is doing great. It's a really wonderful show, and I have a feeling it's going to land somewhere great. And I know it takes a lot of hard work and patience, and um, and uh, your creative geniuses certainly show through um, in a different light with with that. And um, you know, thank really you, Randy. Excited to, yeah. uh, Thank you, Randy, for being an advocate and all the support over the years. It's been it's been really amazing. Thank you. Well, yeah, thank it's been nice. To... Oh, go ahead. Go, ahead. Yeah, go for it. Uh, I was just gonna say it's nice to see you guys are able to adjust and and you know still involve people for Series Fest and, and do stuff like these live watches. And uh, yeah, you need us to come back and do a live watch. We're there for you. And also, I just got to say, um, if you're out there and you're wondering um, where you're going to fly to immediately um, or in the next year or two, uh, once this quarantine is over, I would definitely recommend going to Denver uh, for Serious Fest weekend the next time that it happens, because it is such a fun, first of all, it's like such a fun city. I mean, Denver is really, really amazing. And I just feel like it gets better every year. But also the, the festival itself um, is, is it's just a great atmosphere so many wonderful people and you're going to see a lot of amazing amazing content and you're just going to have a great time in that city so it's a total win if you're looking for um for a vacation thank you thank you thank you thank you james and stephen for donating your time and your constant support to series fest and your constant support to your work and creativity um thank you for joining us for everyone out there who joined us and tuned in uh, thanks for coming to our first watch party. We've got more to come. We've got one coming up with Ryan Eggold um, on the NBC hit series, New Amsterdam. And we have a bunch more that we're about to announce. We also have a creator hangout. So if you're creatives out there, you should join a hangout tomorrow with a uh, series best alumni and winners, Ian Robertson and Emil Pinnock, who are gonna talk about uh, the, the switch from pitching virtually and they've been pitching to a lot of networks, so they have a lot of great insider information. Um, so that's at 8 p.m. Eastern. Um, thank you all, uh, and have a wonderful evening, and happy Wednesday. Um, have a good rest of your week. Stay safe out there, everyone. Hang yeah, in there. Stay safe. Thank you, guys. See you.